Everything you need to teach and learn online, part three, feeds, RSS feeds. We've already looked at your part one. What have you got? A sense of independence. That's definitely what you need. Then you're going to have to set up a blog, a website. Once you've got the website set up, it's time to go out and find some information. And RSS feeds are the way to go. When you find websites that have, that have got information you want or you're looking for, you've got to look for this icon. That's a general icon for an RSS feed. These days, the address bar of your browser usually shows that icon when you come across a website that, supp that supplies an RSS feed. I don't have the address bar showing in the screen recording right now, but it's where you put the www.address.com. If you look for an icon like that, you can see it. A website's got an RSS feed, but what's an RSS feed? Well, you can use an RSS feed reader to subscribe to websites that provide you an RSS feed. When that website updates itself with new information, that information will be alerted to your feed reader and in your and new content will display in your feed reader. So you can have hundreds of websites all in the one place, updating information in the one place, saving you hours and hours of time, putting you up to date with information. Here's my feed reader, it's called Blog Lines. You can see down the left there is a bunch of folders of things that I'm interested in, from social media to sustainable living, general ideas and education. In those folders are several feeds. If we look at, say, for example, sustainable living, I've got feeds for blogs, YouTube searches, more blogs, photos, and things like that. That is a constant feed of new information to do with sustainable living. When the title of the blog, for example here, Permaculture Research Institute of Australia, is bolded with 13, that means 13 new posts have come to, into my feed since last I looked at it. And there are the 13 new posts over there on the right hand side. The Calgary Permaculture uh, Community Group Presents, etc, etc. All the content from that website that's recently been updated has now come into my feed reader. You can see it saves me a lot of time. Okay, so how do you set up a, uh, how do you subscribe to feeds? Well, you've got to get yourself an account on either Blog Lines or Google Reader. I stick with old faithful Blog Lines, but Google Reader is good. Then the next thing you do is you decide on a subject that you want to subscribe to. Let's go for teaching online. Here I'm going to Wikipedia just to check my terminology. I'm doing a search for teaching online. Now, whatever turns up, what I'm looking for are related words. What have we got? Okay, that's interesting. Teaching online redir redirects to e-learning. So that might be another word that I use to search for feeds on. Asynchronous learning might be another term. I don't think brain mass is going to help me. Online journalism, a related field. Maybe I'll search for that as well. You get the idea. Next place I'm going to come to is YouTube. Now, I've already done a search for teaching online on YouTube. Here are a bunch of videos with that in its title or its tag or its descriptions. The thing about YouTube is its search fields have RSS feeds. Now, you can't see the address bar, but the address bar has got that icon I showed you. I'm clicking that icon now. What, what it's doing, because I've set my browser to automatically go to blog lines, don't worry, that's easy and self-explanatory. It has picked up the RSS feed for that YouTube search. Here it is here. It's asking me, do I want it? Where do I want to put it? In a folder or in a top level? I'm just going to put it in the top level. Scrolling down, and then I hit subscribe. That search result has now come over to my uh, feed reader, blog lines, and there it is there, down the bottom. See, YouTube videos matching query teaching online, and there are 10. Those 10 videos recently updated are now showing in there. Here I'm looking at them. I'm not even looking at them, haven't even read them or watched them. But next time there's a video with uh, anything to do with teaching online, it will be listed here. My title will go bold and I'll get one, two, three new videos. You do the same for Delicious. Delicious is awesome. You've got social bookmarking gal galore. Put your search in for uh, teaching online and subscribe to the results. Do the same for Google Blog Search. Search for teaching online, which we might do. What have I got? Less than a minute. And we're going to find a bunch of blog posts that have got the words teaching online on, like, on there. Now the thing is, this is a very crude way to start off. You just find the feeds, then you drill down from there. In the, in the results, whatever you're watching, if you find something better, then you subscribe to that and delete something else. And you keep drilling down until you get rich content that's always updating with information that you need and that you can use. Do this for multiple subjects and you're starting to learn online. Do this for multiple subjects and you're getting good content to teach with online. That's all from me, feeds. Everything you need to teach and learn online, part three.